How's it going Titan fans? HC here. Now, around the internet, I see a lot of people asking if they should get Titanfall 2. Or maybe they already got it, but are struggling with the multiplayer, not really knowing what's going on. Don't know which grenades or tactical abilities they should use. Of course, the only way to know for sure is to play the game and figure it out along the way. Which is why I encourage to try everything out for at least a couple of matches. Maybe you'll find that one special gun that feels right just for you. This beginner's guide will go over everything you'll have available from the start, some of the early unlocks, and some general suggestions that might help improve your experience with Titanfall 2's multiplayer. Before we get to any of that, I would like to make a few suggestions in the HUD options, if you haven't already made changes to it that suits you. First, you should take note of the FOV slider. Changing this lets you expand your field of view, giving you better awareness to what's at your sides. Pick the one you like the best, but usually the preferred is around 90. Secondly, you should turn off all these notifications that will show up during matches. You don't need to know a teammate has a core ability ready. All these pop-ups simply obscures your view of what's going on. Do yourself a favor and remove some of them. Now that that's out of the way, you should consider which game mode you want to try. Many go right to pilot v pilots and gets destroyed. If you only have little or no experience with this multiplayer, then Attrition and Bounty Hunt are the most rookie-friendly modes. These modes have plenty of targets for you to practice on, and when you get the hang of the maps and moving around in them, you should start looking into other game modes. And if you want to take a look at the maps before entering the fray, the private matches will let you jump into any map and have a look around, learn the layout and viable routes, but keep in mind only real matches will teach you how fights really play out. First we take a look at our pilot. We start out with 6 available classes, so we can already make a bunch of different setups. But let's pick the first one so we can see what we got here. Let's look at the weapons. We already have a lot of options right from the start, so I'll go through each of them and give my opinions as well as suggestions to which mods are worth using for the weapon. Every weapon has a variety of mods and sights you unlock as you use them. Most of those are shared though there are a few weapons that have rare and totally unique mods. The R201 and the car are the go-to first choice for many, and with good reason. They're both excellent weapons, pretty much the jack of all trades for their respective weapon classes. Similar on most points, main differences are better range on the R201 and less recoil on the car. Good weapons overall, many players swear by these two. For the R201, I would suggest Speedloader and Tactical. All sights are good, pick the one that suits your preferred engagement range. Personally, I prefer the regular Hitchcock. Remember, the threat scope removes one mod slot. The car, I would again suggest Speed Loader, you're gonna see that one a lot. Gunrunner if you don't slide much, and Tactic Hill to recharge those abilities quickly. For sights, the Iron Sight and the Hollow Sights are good for the few occasions it's worth ADSing with this gun. But if you want to stand out a little from the crowd, maybe do things your own way. There's plenty of other options to go for here. With a recent update, the Spitfire got a much needed damage upgrade and went from being almost a joke weapon to a viable option. A 3 shot kill on most ranges, and the biggest magazine out of all weapons, you can really send some lead down range. It's got a bit of a kick, and its sight options aren't the greatest, and hit fire is decent at best. But if you can overcome these challenges, you'll have a fun weapon that especially excels in modes where AI is present. The mods I would suggest are gun ready. The hipfire on the Spitfire is not among the best. You'll want an ADS to make the most out of it. Speed loader is nice, but not a priority. Most of the sights are bad for this weapon. I'd consider the threat scope or the iron sights. The others zoom in too much to be any good in mid close encounters. Perhaps sniping is more your style, then you'll be in for a tough learning curve on this game. The first sniper rifle available is the Kraber, arguably the hardest sniper rifle to use in a game where pilots zooming around already makes sniping difficult. But it's possibly also the most rewarding one to use. You see, should you hit a pilot anywhere with the Kraber, it's a guaranteed kill. That's great, but the trade-off? You have to lead your shots. This is not a hitscan weapons, so your bullets will have travel time. A challenging weapon, especially for console players, but should you master it, you'll be a force to be reckoned with. 
For mods, I'd suggest Gun Ready and Speed Loader. Ricochet will let your shots bounce off surfaces. If you're good with this weapon, you can pull off some real trick shots with this. As for scopes, the factory issue and the variable scope is the way to go here. Nice moves. If long range isn't your style, maybe close range is. The EVA or EVA shotgun is one, if not the deadliest weapon at close range. Automatic fire, a fairly tight spread, keeps your damage focused on what you're aiming at. Getting in close will be the name of the game here. You'll have to use all your movement abilities to their fullest to succeed with this powerful weapon. For mods, I suggest Speed Loader, Gun Runner, and Extra Ammo. Iron Sights or Hollow Sights, if you must ADS. Of the Grenadier class, which is some of the lesser used weapons in the game, you start with the SMR Sidewinder, my personal favorite of the class. It's more or less a machine gun that shoots micro-missiles instead of bullets. These have travel time, so you'll have to lead your shots which may take some time getting used to. Should you hit those pilots, however, they'll scrape up the leftovers from the floor. Additionally, the Grenadier weapons will also do damage to Titans no matter where you hit them, while the other weapon classes require you to hit their weak points to cause any damage. Mods for the SMR is without a doubt speed loader and extra ammo. The other mods are just about useless for this. There are no sight options for Grenadier weapons. Moving on to secondary weapons, we'll start with the anti-titan weapons. You'll get to know these quite well if you'll have any chance of fighting back when that enemy titan comes around the corner. The charge rifle returns largely unaltered from the first game. A laser weapon with seemingly infinite range lets you do damage from afar. You'll need to charge each shot however, so make sure your aim is on point. Alternatively, you can use the charge hack mod once unlocked for an instant shot for the cost of less damage. As mentioned, the charge hack is very useful. Combined with extra ammo, you can blast away all day. The MGL Mag Launcher also returns, but has seen some changes since Titanfall 1. It has much less range than the charge rifle, but because of the magnetic grenades this burst firing launcher spits out, you don't need to be so precise while using it, making it much easier to use while running on walls or flying through the air dodging Titan fists and bullets. Like on the SMR, all mods, besides speed loader and extra ammo, are pointless. Finally, we come to pistols. These are most often used as backup for pilots using snipers, sometimes for grenadier and shotgunners as well, or pilots who just want to show off a little. Your starting choices are the fully automatic but low damage RE45, the P2016, which is sort of a middle ground between speed and power, and the Wingman Elite, that's slower to fire but packs a real punch, a revolver holding six shots, more than enough to kill anything that moves. Mod suggestions are as follows. RA-45, speed load, extra ammo, or gun runner. P-2016, extra ammo, silencer, or speed load. Wingman, extra ammo, speed loader, ricochet. All are very fast to ADS, so focus on sending more bullets down range, or reload less often. Moving on to your tactical abilities. You're given the three to start with. Cloak, Pulse Blade, and Grapple Hook. If you're the sneaky type, or just don't want to be seen when you cross the road, Cloak is the one for you. It turns you near invisible for a while, but as soon as you fire your first shot, you'll be invisible once again. Remember, the Cloak was designed for Titan fighting, so pilots will have an easier time spotting you. Pulse Blade is a knife that when thrown will show nearby enemies, both on your radar, but also through walls. It lasts only a little while, but is extremely useful in preparing you for what's in that room you're just about to enter. Or maybe show you where that damn cloak guy's hiding. Remember, this is still a knife. Throw it at a pilot, and he will go down. The grapple hook is a useful tool for those who have trouble with the high-speed maneuvering. It'll let you grab onto walls, floors, titans, even other pilots. Once you've become more proficient with moving around, the grapple might no longer be the best ability, but it's certainly one of the most fun ones. Next is your throwables. You have three to start with, each very different from the other. The frag grenade is similar to most grenades you see in video games. Pull the pin, throw, and boom. You can also hold the grenade for a second or two to cook the grenade, meaning it'll blow up faster after you've thrown it. Alternatively, if you press weapon switch while holding the grenade, you'll drop the grenade on the floor in front of you. Useful if someone is chasing you inside a building. The arc grenade does much less damage than the other grenades. It's meant for stunning pilots and obscure a titan's view. We'll still kill a pilot if they're low on health, but damage is not the focus of these grenades. 
The Fire Star is a new addition to the series. Basically a throwing star that will stick to whatever it hits, then light itself on fire, covering a small area with flames. It's extremely deadly to pilots killing in a split second. It will also cause damage to a titan, should you stick one with it. Even obscure the vision if you can land one near their eyes. Being a throwing star rather than a grenade, it has a longer range and less shallow trajectory when thrown. Last of your loadout, you need to decide what pilot kits you want to use. You'll have two equipped at all times. In Kit 1, the choice can be hard to make. Power Cell will let you use your tactical abilities more often, cloak, grapple and such, while the fast regen, well, lets you heal up much faster. It comes down to how much you want to rely on your tacticals. Kit 2 is a much easier choice. Kill Report lets you know where enemies have been killed, giving you an overall idea where the action is, while Wall Hang lets you stick to walls if you aim down sights while wall running. But more often than not, standing still is a death sentence in Titanfall. This kit doesn't get real good stuff until much later. As for boosts, you will only start with amped weapons, but since I've already made a couple of videos covering all the boosts, I'll leave a link to those if you're interested. I will now go over what unlocks in the first 10 levels to look out for. Of course, there'll be many many more, but these will get you started. The L-Star is the first weapon you unlock at level 2. This LMG is similar to the SMR, good damage, but with bullet travel time. It is, however, a very fun weapon to use, as your targets are reduced to chunks. I initially didn't like it, but after the damage buff it got a few months ago, it became one of my favorite run-and-gun weapons. At level 3 you unlock Stim. Stim is one of the most used abilities, and it's no wonder. Not only will it give you a huge speed boost, sending you speeding off like a bullet, but it also accelerates your health regeneration for a short time, letting you escape a bad situation or send you flying into the action. At level 5 you unlock the EPG-1, a rocket launcher style weapon, which slow projectiles and a high learning curve means this is probably best left alone until you're more used to leading shots and staying on the move while shooting. At level 7 you unlock Ronin, the hit and run titan, more on this killer in the next episode. At level 8, the Alternator, a very strong SMG best suited for close quarters. It kicks hard once you start shooting, so if you'll have any chance of fighting at some distance you'll have to tap your fire button to keep it steady. An excellent run and gun type weapon. The mods I would suggest are the extra ammo, speed loader, or gun runner. No sights as you really don't need to ADS with this one. Level 9, the Gravity Star. Another throwing star. This one not focused on damage, although it will hurt to get hit by. A much more tactical weapon. The Graf Star will lock down pilots, grunts, grenades, gas canisters, all kinds of stuff, letting you either get away safe or get an easy kill on that guy behind the AWOL. And at level 10, the Mozambique. My personal favorite pistol because it's more than just a pistol. It's a pistol sized shotgun. It even has great range for a shotgun, but the shots do have travel time. The good rate of fire and pretty high damage has let me catch quite a number of pilots by surprise give it a go, you just might like it. Suggested mods are once again extra ammo, as four shots are a little on the low end. Speed loader or gun runner if you have trouble sliding in time. On a final note, I would like to draw attention to the networks. The networks let you find other players that share your interests. Fellow countrymen, players who like pizza, or maybe enjoy the same games as you do, like Battlefield or Overwatch. There's sure to be a network for it. Simply use the search bar in the upper left to find a network. You can join many networks, but only have one active at a time. Join several to have more options when going for the happy hour bonus of 5 merits. Remember, the happy hour bonus can only be claimed once a day. If you wish to play with others in the same network, simply choose Invite Network, pick the game mode you wish to play, and wait for a moment. A pop-up will appear on the screen for everyone in the network who isn't in-game or editing classes, giving everyone a chance to join. That's all for this time. I hope you found it helpful in choosing how to build your classes. Next time we'll take a closer look at the titans you start with. Thank you for watching, and have a good one.